When we got on scene, uh, we had a fully involved garage fire. Um, and during our initial attack operations, we experienced two explosions um, coming from the garage area. Um, as a result of those explosions, we had exposures um, on to the north and to the uh, east of the main structure that was on fire uh, that the fire spread to. So we ended up working uh, three different uh, houses that were on fire. So when that happened, uh, how was that going Yeah, we, we initially, once we got the exposures into the uh, second uh, structure, uh, we called for a second alarm. We got uh, pretty much every fire department here in the county um, at the scene, and then we also got departments uh, from Genesee County standing by in our station at this moment. So tell me, what were some of the issues? I mean, you had all these fires going at once. What, what did you do? Well, that, that that's, was the biggest problem with three structures going at one time. Um, you got several different crews trying to work uh, three structures and just trying to come up and um, formulate a unified command so that we're making sure that we're able to, you know, designate proper resources to each structure to get the fire out as, as uh, soon as we can. And were there people in the homes that got fire at the um, I am not quite sure about that. Um, I don't have that information readily available to me by the time I got on scene. Um, obviously everybody was out of the structure so I don't know if they were already occupied. Uh, once we got here. Is there anybody injured? No, no, no injuries at this time. Okay, that's good. Yes, very good. Um, so, if you had to say how many companies were here? Um, we probably got at least a dozen companies um, that have been called into the area. Uh, what were some, some of the uh, difficulties you had? You know, these structures are very close. Yeah, that's that's the problem, the difficulties we, we always face with these types of structures that are really close together um, is there's very little room to work. The exposures are, are pretty intimate, um, as well as these, these houses are fairly old and a lot of them are broken up and, and corded off and segmented. So getting into the area where there might be a fire takes a lot of efforts to get hoses and access um, into these areas. Um, as far as the the home on the corner here, I believe, I believe that is an apartment. I don't believe it's a single family. Uh, I'm not quite sure, to be honest with you. Okay. The, the, the home to the north is a single family, and I believe the home to the east was also a single family. So at this point, is the Red Cross been called for these folks? Um, that part, I don't know. I have to check with the, the county coordinators. They're usually the ones that uh, coordinate that for us. Uh, it has, oh, sorry. As far as the occupants of the, the structures, um, I'm not really sure, but I'm, I'm assuming you're talking at least a, a half a dozen to a dozen, you know, occupants between all three houses. Um, I know we've had, we've been called to five uh, East Academy before a call before, and I know there's a, a family, a young family that lives in that house. Um, and we, we've we've uh, assisted in the past, so. Has the cause of the fire been determined no. where it started and where, where the fire, fire has started? Right now we think the origin of the fire was in the in the garage of uh, the house on the corner. Um, at this point in time we do not know what the cause of the fire is. Um, we do have the uh, county fire investigators along with state fire investigators here on scene that will help us determine that cause. And this is quite a huge scene. I mean this is probably one of the biggest scenes I'm sure. I, I mean I definitely have been on. I don't know about you. But, I mean, uh, tell me a little bit about the difficulty of dealing with three separate homes being on fire at the same time. I think the big one of the biggest difficulties that we have is actually getting an adequate water supply to uh, put out three structure fires. Uh, we actually have uh, an engine set up drafting from the canal to provide a supplemental water um, source for us. Uh, we also had about six different uh, tankers uh, on standby, so if we did lose water pressure from the village system, that we would be able to, uh, you know, rely on the tanker uh, for water. And do you know what the status of the homes are? I guess here, like whether they're total losses or, you know, not or anything like that. At, at this point, I don't really know. Um, I think most of the sustained damage uh, to the one on the corner, um, you know, that's where the main fire really was. The other two were exposures. 
Um, you know, at this point, I'm not really sure, you know, until we can get in and take a closer look. Uh, so, as far as the explosions in the blocks, do you know what those were from? We don't know at this time. Um, we're hoping, obviously, uh, to figure that out here shortly. The fire investigators, they'll, they'll be looking into that and taking samples. Was, uh, the, uh, was the homeowner still here on the scene, or were they, did they leave, or what? That part I don't know at this point. Did you hear, uh, once you arrived on scene, that you heard the two explosions? Was I'm sorry, what was that? Once you arrived on scene, was that when you heard the two explosions? Or yes. Was yeah. Yep. Was it a, an attached garage, or a... It was attached. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, I think it was, you can see it's, it looks like it's attached, but it's so close that there pretty much wasn't a whole lot of space between the actual garage and, and the house itself. The other house on the other I guess, uh, on State Street, didn't seem too bad. No, we just had some extensions into that house, so we were able to get up into that second floor uh, attic area and, uh, and get that fire extinguished out. So it did have a fire. Yes, there was fire in that in that structure. Okay. In, so, the, in the attic. Okay. Yep. The uh, garage went to the house in the corner. Correct. Yep. I guess. Uh, how long does it seem like this usually uh, will be up for? We're going to be here for quite a while. Yep. We'll stay. We'll stay on scene. At least most of our equipment will be here while the fire investigation is being conducted. Uh, is there? Uh, I guess like uh, how long was it, when was the first uh, call put in around like even what time it was when uh, uh, you guys were I don't really remember to be honest with you. It was a, it's a blur at this point. I don't even know what time it is now. <laughs> uh, I guess like you know do you have any like things to say I guess about how your team was and how you guys handled the you know the three fires here tonight? I mean that's well I mean I think it was initially it was a challenge trying to get everybody coordinated and get things set up but once we got that going. Um, you know, we had a you know, unified incident command system in place uh, where we had, you know, operations at each of the three different structures reporting back to a, a centralized command system. Um, so once that was in place and, and everything, we were operating pretty smoothly. So it was just a matter of getting enough resources on scene uh, so that we had backup crews in place to, you know, replenish crews that were already inside and enough equipment here to, uh, to handle, you know, the situation that we had. Did you have to evacuate the neighborhood? The, no, the, the at this time, not, none of the neighborhood is evacuated. Um, so uh, everybody seems to be still uh, able to get to yes. their houses, other than what we have closed off just from apparatus on the streets. So you did use canal water? You actually did We did not end up drafting canal yeah. water, but we had it set up just in case. Uh, yeah. All our water was supplied right here from the village water system. So there were no firefighter injuries or people injuries at all? Correct, the there was no injuries. Uh, any animals at all? Not that I'm aware of. 